Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Global Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present continued landing testing with the MarQ Mars landing system with the basic situation with no payload and coming down from a 212 kilometer orbit circular. Uh, I think we've basically nailed it, uh, but we do need to figure out what goes on when it has different payloads inside and from different heights around Mars and that is what this video is about. So. First of all, this is it coming down without a payload and from that standard height of 212 kilometers. That is the minimum that the cheat menu gets you down to if you set an orbit around Mars. And so that's what I'm using. And you can see we've got the parachutes out and it's coming down. Unfortunately, there is a little quirk here that I eventually uh, solve. I do solve many things. I've done much, much landing testing with this and most of that is not making it into this video. So I'm just giving you the highlights, I, I swear. <laughs> so here we are, you can see the important number here is the target distance in the KOS window there, and you can see we're about three kilometers away from our target. Uh, that's uh, based on the coordinates, whereas MechJab is reading from the actual ISRU unit that we are landing at. That's a drilling unit that can refuel this. We would want to get within render range of that. And so we're a little bit further away, but we've got other problems right now. We've got too much horizontal speed because of an error I did. And so I had to fix that error. Uh, but yeah, so it's skidding. I decided to include this because this is funny. Uh, so I mean, uh, yeah, uh, previous to this I had actually gotten uh, a better landing, but uh, not quite as close. You can see the target distance 3.3 kilometers. Still outside render range, but uh, we will improve upon that. And mainly it's controlling itself by pitch variation. A lot of people go like, you know, you have to roll this way, roll that way, because that's what the shuttle did in order to control where it lands. That's not very effective in Kerbal Space Program in general. And it's especially not effective uh, around Mars. So uh, Kerbal Space Program really hates roll, as far as I can tell. So you can use it, but it's not the greatest thing. And so I still do use a pitch variation here. And here we are trying again without the whole skidding thing. And we're doing a pretty good job of getting close to that ISRU unit. Parachutes out. The parachutes are really good as far as being efficient for the mass and saving us some fuel. And again, this is empty right now. You can see the ballistic coefficient 0.25, and that is basically how it is when the Maru Q is empty. And here we are a little bit further away, 4.4-ish uh, kilometers. And But this time we'll land properly. Uh, there's no sound for some reason on this particular landing. We will have on subsequent ones, but yep. No problems this time after fixing the skidding issue. Uh, there's that rocking bit. Uh, technically, it's supposed to land on skids. The skids are supposed to partially deploy first, and it'll land on those instead of landing on its belly. But for now, I'm not bothering with that because that necessitates having a two-step animation. Now, this is with a 12-ton payload. So our ballistic coefficient is 0.35 instead of 0.25. Still not as heavy as Starship would be coming down, by the way. But Starship has tiny little fins and not as much surface area hitting the atmosphere. So what's immediately apparent is that we are much further away with this load. You can see we are 73 kilometers away according to KOS. So that's not so good and we need to adjust for that. And the way I adjust for that is with the deorbit periapsis. So when we do the deorbit burn, we adjust the periapsis that we go to based on how much mass we have and what the ballistic coefficient is basically. So that is how we're going to continue to adjust it, but we have to adjust it in a way that doesn't mess up the baseline situation, right? We, we're already getting close with the basic situation without a payload. We don't want to mess that up. So it has to be done carefully. And other numbers along the way have to be adjusted where it thinks it needs to be at various heights needs to be adjusted based on its ballistic coefficient too. Ooh, that was a little bit rough. Uh, but yeah, so all along the way there needs to be adjustment with based on the ballistic coefficient and the mass. And now that is the payload. It is a base module. I think I'll make a custom base module. This one, uh, it gets, 
it's too tight in there and it's very hard to move it out. And I also have to sort of adjust the colliders on the ramp bit because it gets caught on there. But mainly it's because there's no, not enough clearance on the wheels. I think I'll make a base module with wheel arcs and uh, adjust it a little bit. That's a four meter high bay. So I'll just make a three meter base module. I think that would be good enough. And make sure it fits nicely in there with wheels and all. So anyway, we weren't able to get that base module out. It got caught on the lip of the the ramp there. Anyway, this is trying again, trying to get it closer after many tries. This many, many tries occurred and many adjustments along the way. So based on the mass, we adjust the periapsis we go to on the deal rip burn. In order to adjust for heights, which I will do as well, we adjust the the deorbit distance, how far away we do the deorbit burn. So here you can see our target distance is 13 kilometers away and we land with the extra 12 ton load. So for now, I decided to take that. So 13.76 kilometers. I decided to take that for now and we'll adjust a little bit more. But first I wanted to make sure we didn't mess up the situation for when we're not carrying any payload, right? So we've made all these adjustments for when we are carrying payload. Let's make sure that it doesn't cause problems for when we're not. In particular, I decided to reduce the target pitch that holds from most of the way down to 55 degrees instead of 60. And I wanted to make sure that that worked out for this situation. And it did. You can see that we're, I think, even closer than on the previous tests. Target distance only 0.75 kilometers. So the 55 degree pitch was much better. And there we go. So it was better able to control itself with that pitch and we are within render range this time. All right, so this is from a higher altitude. This is 412 kilometers instead of 212. Now I had previously done testing without a payload from uh, 312, 412, and 512. So I already did all that, but this is with a payload and seeing how close we get. And this will be the final landing in this particular video, so I'll just show it in full. Uh, it's not getting within render range on the 312, 412, and 512 without a payload, uh, but I decided that having adjusted for the payload, we would uh, work on the altitudes. It's got this roll problem, and that's pretty persistent when it has a payload, and I don't know whether that's because of the payload and maybe needing auto strutting or not. But anyway, so now that we've made adjustments for the payload, I'll continue to do testing from the different altitudes and adjusting for that. And again, what we adjust is how far away uh, it starts its deorbit burn, because that will determine the sort of glide slope, the, yeah, basically the slope that is coming in at. And if we could just hit that the same each time, that would be great, I think. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit finicky, really. It doesn't always do what I think it's going to do. So the way the parachutes work is they fully deploy right there. And then we've got a little bit of time with them fully deployed and then we release them. Otherwise the landing calculation gets a little bit messed up by the drag that they produce. Because they're producing more and more drag as we get lower and lower into the thicker part of Mars's atmosphere. We are adjusting for the height of our target location that is written in. So in the landing script, I have a line that says, okay, what is the altitude of your target? And so I have to write that in so that it adjusts for that properly. If we're landing at a higher location, of course, uh, we would want to compensate for that, but I haven't tested that aspect of it yet. So it's got that written in there, but I haven't checked whether that works out properly or not. So here we are, we're still 53 kilometers away here. Uh, from this higher altitude, so I'll have to make further adjustments, but that's how the progress is going and it takes a lot of time. Each of these landings, take uh, because we have to go all the way through re-entry, takes nearly half an hour. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little bit tedious, but it's worth it so that we can do further operations around Mars in a more predictable way. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.